Really? We got that? We better should we well yeah, we should include that in the show. Of course we should. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Hi, uh, welcome to the Ball and After. I'm Matt Ryan. Hello. And we're only three episodes back and we're already doing a special. That's because it's cup final time in Ireland. And before we get into all the detail, I want to give a big thank you at the very start to Michelle Legrew. The little still, those of you all saw, looking at this on YouTube, was a photo by Michelle she allowed us to use of Stefan Zesevich, who we're going to be meeting in this video, uh, with a big dunk for Aina against Colester last Saturday night. Spoiler, they didn't win that game. Colester actually won it in quite comfortable fashion. So we have got a lot to get through in this show, but I uh, want to give a shout out to Michelle for thanking her for using that. So link to her business below. She's a great photographer. Check her out. And, well, we have a lot to get through. We are going to meet the players, the coaches, and, well, get the stories from them ahead of these two huge games Saturday night. For those of you looking to watch them and don't really want to watch me talk this much and then talk to all the players, well, we'll tell you where to watch it now. That is on TG Cahar, if you're in Ireland, a station itself will be having it, but around the world, free, no geo-blocking whatsoever in the stream, tgcahar.ie, that's tg4.ie, the link is also below. And we've got a lot to get through. We're going to be talking to the coaches of both men's teams, the coach and one of the players of uh, Colester, a few of the players involved in the men's game as well. But the first person we're talking to is not involved directly this weekend, although he will be in the stands, that's for sure, on Sunday for the women's game. That is the men's coach at Colester, Brian O'Malley. And Brian picked up a huge win with his side of the weekend. They got a big, big win over Ada. And I spoke to him about that game afterwards, but I also spoke to him about what it takes to win the cup, and most importantly, what the battles he sees being decisive in Saturday's big game between Aina and Temple Oak. Well, I think, you know, Aina like to switch a, a lot and they, they, you know, they've good players and they move their feet. It'll be kind of down to maybe uh, Stefan versus Lorcan, that matchup will be huge. And then how uh, Colleen and Reynolds get on. I think the, whoever wins those matchups and maybe by a little bit more will be, uh, will come out on the, on the right side. But it will be a close game. It's kind of a battle of offense and defense, you know. Temple Oak have perennially been a really high scoring team and there's nice matchups all the way down, but I think the Killeen uh, versus Reynolds and, and Lorcan versus Stefan is, is, are the two marquee ones. So there's a couple of things you need to bear in mind when it comes to Irish basketball. That is most of the players are amateurs, which the great side is they've got great backstories. One we're going to mention now, who we're going to be his teammates a little later in this video, is Lorcan Murphy. We have a link below to a video he's posted of his dunk highlights from just this season alone. Uh, I call him Errol Lorcan. Uh, he wears a Freak 7s, in case you're wondering. Zoom, say Freak 7s, Zoom Freak 1s. We haven't got Yanis a 7th shoe yet, just yet. Just a few more additions to come. But uh, yeah, Lorcan really showing the hops early this season. He'll be a guy to watch out for on Saturday night. But another player to watch out for is going to be opposing him, and that's Stefan Zesevic, who is a Serbian who did not come to Ireland to play basketball. It just turns out he's really good at basketball and lives in Ireland. He came here, in fact, to work with Google. So I met Stefan after that Aina defeat at the hands of Colester and just asked him about what it's like to be in this cup final and, you know, generally speaking, what it's like just living here and doing his job. I mean, we feel pretty good. Today was a great performance by us. They hit big shots and that was the big reason why we had a little poor performance. But it was our defense as well. But coming into the next game, we feel pretty confident. We know that we can come back even if we're down. So it feels fine. Uh, like for you, it's your first year in Super League, your second year in Aina. What's the feel of you playing at its higher level this year? It feels amazing uh, to be the winner of the National League and then come in and compete in the Super League. It feels good. It's uh, a lot different and a lot higher level, and I'm excited for that. Now, your days up to Google, I believe. You hear much about this big game next week at work. Yeah, people know about it. I, I've informed some people and they heard on the news and everything, so we can expect even some of them coming if they got tickets, of course. Uh, and obviously, you're not originally from Serbia yourself. So you're coming home to an over or watching on the internet? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm sending a link to my friends, family, everybody that I know, and I'm sure they're going to be supporting from there. Uh, like, if we have a few Serbian followers, we're going to a greeting in Serbia to feel free. Excuse me? Go to send a greeting in Serbia to your friend for our YouTube, feel free. Oh, okay. Pratite nas na YouTube kanal. So, Stefan's got a great life story, but you've got so many people with great stories here, and we still don't have a small matter of a basketball game to deal with in the men's final. And I wanted to talk to both teams, get their take at what they're thinking. So we're going to start off with the A aside, side, given we've already met Stefan. And first up is Stefan's coach, Darren McGovern, who lives ridiculously close to the arena, but he's guiding this club to its first ever cup final. 
It's, it's, it's not something we identified at the start of the season. And go, well, let's go be in a cup final. So it's it's a bit of a, a bit of a dream, a bit of a you know whirlwind for us as well. Like you know, we started pre-season with going, let's get enough wins to be you know stable mid-table team, not fighting for relegation, but you know maybe push for a top four spot. You know. And then obviously things went well in the start of the league and we've won a few games and we were, we were stable and we realised, oh, we're actually in a really good position in the league, we can see how far we go here. And then along came the cup and, you know, we are where we are now. And obviously this is like the, the final of the cup, it's sort of it's a different vibe to because obviously you're going to be national television, yeah. full house here, it's going to be pretty noisy. Yeah. Do you feel sort of the experience challenge is going to be something you've got to get your guys over? Because a lot of your guys have not played in a game like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose a lot of our guys haven't played in a game like this here. You know what I mean? We do have experience in our squad, like players who played NCAA, Division One, Two, you know, Final Fours, you know, high level with big crowds and big stadiums. So for them, this is probably a bit, you know, I wouldn't say normal, but it's, they're used to it, they have experience. We've got other guys who have played internationally, you know, played at high levels as well. You know, it's something they're used to, I suppose, with a big crowds, like our gym in Iena has been packed, you know, I think you were there last weekend, yeah. you know, the noise in the third quarter when we were on a big run was huge, you know what I mean, it's noisy, and we're used to that, you know, two weeks ago down in Cork, the noise was huge, you know, so it's, it's one of them things we're, we're slowly getting used to, you know, it's, it's going to be very different here, obviously, with packed arena, but uh, something we're looking forward to, you know, we, we, we can't argue where we are. It's, Got there on merit. And for the people who are like watching Aina and Timbalo for the first time now, I always say to people like one of the best ones I've seen all year was the game you guys lost out to yeah, yeah, yeah. But for those who haven't seen that game or you at all, like what should they be watching out for on Saturday if they are familiar with you two sides? Well I suppose speed speed of the basketball, you know what I mean? Like I think both teams really pride themselves in getting up and down the floor really quickly. Uh, both teams share the ball pretty well. You know, there's a good spread of scores, you know, we've got one top scorer and then the rest of the guys spread the points out. That's very similar to Temple Oak. They can have one guy on any given day that can score 25, you know, and then they have three or four of them that can do that. And same with us, you know, uh, both teams are talented. They can, you know, they can, they're athletic, you know what I mean? They can shoot the three pointer really well, you know, so it should be an entertaining game. If it's played the same sort of style, you know, I think it's something maybe Mark Keenan would want as well, you know, a nice free flowing game. Something I'd want is a nice free flowing game, but then. You know, cup final is a bit anxious, and people are missing shots, or people are you know not, things aren't going the way they're going. It might well, be a bit difficult. That, as a last yeah. question, what's it going to take for Aina to win the cup on Saturday match? Uh, staying close to the team at half time would be nice. Uh, you know, we've had difficulty sometimes. You know, when, whenever we go down early in the first half, you know, we always have brilliant second halves. You know, that's what we are all about. You know, second half our fitness is through the roof. We just need to make sure we're chipping away with them. You know. They're in touch and distance at half time. You know, as underdogs, if you're close, you know, you never know what's going to happen in the second half. You know, as you would have heard from a bit with Darren, they are fresh in the Super League this year. They're nine and five in the regular season, but this is uncharted waters for them entirely. So I want to talk to two of their players about what it's like being here. First, we've got Hilary Netsinyanwa, who is a part of that story, that 18 month long story now of coming all the way from Division One doing what it took to get to promote it and get into this cup final, this main cup final for Aina. And then we're going to hear from Josh Wilson, who, well, how do I say it? He's, there's a bit of a time zone issue for him and his family watching back home in the US. So we're going to hear a bit from Josh about that, about how they're tuning in. Oh, it's just amazing. Like, it's indescribable, to be honest, the journey we've been on in the last 18 months just to get to Super League and now to get to cup final we faced probably the three toughest teams in the country and now we're facing another top team in the country as well it's just that's thing because you've been on this journey for the last season and a half because division one obviously there was a whole conference phase but then it came down to basically two games to make sure you actually came up yeah uh, which is like after this <laughs> long long road because it's a crazy long season now in division one mm -hmm. suddenly well you got to win these two games or else it doesn't mean anything like you know so do you think that mentally sort of prepared you guys for this season i think i think it definitely did because uh, we had a lot of success last year, we were 24 and 1, and then to be told at the end of the season that we need to play these two games that determine whether we get promoted or not was, um, you know, it was just a, it was a big shock to the system. Yeah. But we adjusted very well with the experience that we have on the team. We were able to, you know, bring everything together throughout the year into those two games, and uh, we were fortunate enough to win both games and get the promotion. And obviously now in the Super League you've had a fantastic season. Obviously last weekend didn't go that great for y'all, but generally speaking it's been a very good league campaign. You're obviously, you won every game in the Cup, otherwise it wouldn't be here. Yeah. Uh, what's it felt like for you guys in the four? What's making it work for Aina this year? 
there's a number of things making making uh, it such a successful season. Um, we'll start with you know our coaching staff, Darren McGovern and Rob Keane. They really they really dedicate a lot of work. It's not their full time job, but they're yeah. dedicating so much work into getting us to a level where we're ready to compete every weekend. And uh, on top of that, we've got a lot of support in the background. Our committee, as well as our supporters, are there with us every game. Our away games all the way down in Tralee, our away games in Belfast, our home games, we've got such amazing support and that's just, you know, it's just brewed such a successful culture in the club. It's a, fa it's a family culture really. And then of course, the team that we have with our players. Um, the last thing I want to ask you is, for you personally, for you to make sure you keep your best on Saturday night, to you do everything you can, what do you got to make sure you get right? What are going to be the big battles for Hillary? Uh, the big battle for me is getting enough rest. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of trouble sleeping at night, but I'm going to try to get some good rest, uh, prepare probably with the team. Tomorrow night we have our last training session. Uh, we have another walkthrough on Saturday morning, and then just, you know, sleeping well, training well, getting your diet correctly. Uh, Do you have any superstitions about what you eat in a game day or anything like that? Or? Yes, I only have one meal. Oh wow. One meal. Uh, and that's around lunchtime. It's always um, or at the same time and I always have to have my wrist taped up before a game. It's like you've got a lot of family obviously back home in LA. Are you hoping a lot of them will be able to tune in at the game? It'll be like, you know, a nice time of day for them. Yeah, it'll be around noon, so it'll be able, they'll be able to watch it, so they'll be tuning in. Texting and tweeting and stuff like that during the game. So, and obviously, while it's great that they can watch the games, is the time zone a challenge? Keeping close to your family when you're living and, and playing ball over here. Uh, yeah, just when they when they're able to get off work to call, it's one, mainly time for me to go to sleep. So, it's about uh, setting up an extra hour or two to talk to my family and friends. So, it's it's it's, it's convenient, but it's not convenient. So, and like, how have you found sort of life uh, living and playing in Ireland? What's it been like playing basketball here? It's been good, a good experience. Um, the people are really friendly. The, the community, our Aina community, has really gotten behind our team. So uh, it's been an adjustment a little bit, but other than that, it's been it's been nice, nice and easy. So. And the last thing I want to ask you about Saturday night. How much are you looking forward to it, man? I'm looking forward to it. They said it's sold out in a minute, two minutes. So um, I'm looking forward to the big crowd. Looking forward to putting on a performance for people who don't know about Aina basketball and like for the kids who are looking for a club to see how Aina has grown within the last year or two. So it's, it's a big deal, big deal. Hopefully we can host a trophy up at the end of it, so. Now for Aina, there's a whole lot of new to this. There's a whole lot of having been there, haven't done that. Temple Oak couldn't be any more different. The vast majority of their team have played in multiple cup finals at this stage. But one guy is playing a second cup final after a huge gap, and he was anything but wearing a Temple Oak jersey then, but he is familiar with the guy coaching him now. Darren Towns is part of a Neptune side that won this trophy at the start of the last decade, and he's come back after going to Chile, Iceland, Finland, but he's back playing now in Ireland with Temple Oak under coach Mark Keenan, who was coaching the UL side, his Neptune side beat, all the way back in that cup final. So I asked Darren about what it's like being back in Ireland playing, and I then talked to Mark about what he sees as being the key important factors in getting the win on Saturday night, but also how the cup has sort of been a thing for Temple Oak during what's best been described as a mixed league season for them. It's overwhelming, to be honest, uh, but it feels good and it feels comfortable. That's the most important thing about what I uh, play basketball. You know, it just feels comfortable and it feels right. And uh, pretty much me and Jason had one goal. One of our goals was to actually come back and come to the cup final. And uh, it feels good to achieve, to get to that point, but to actually win it, that's gonna be something else that we have to put a lot of work into still. So it feels good. And for you, because uh, obviously we've been talking about before this about what it's going to take to win this game. For you, mm -hmm. what's going to come down? Because you played Aina before this year. You know what they're like. They know what you're like. Yeah. What do you think is going to be decisive in this game? Execution, to, to be honest. Uh, execution on defense, on offense, uh, communicating, and uh, also playing as a team. Um, if we stick to our game plan and stay to what we do, then I think we'll have a good chance of, uh, of winning. But uh, Aina is a really good team, so we have to respect them as well and just have to grind it out. It's going to be a tough game. Look, it's, they're really, they have assembled a really good squad this year. You know, they've multiple threats, you know, so defense is a big key for us. Can we contain Sesevich? Can we contain Wilson? You know, they're the two kind of driving forces, you know, but 
Tomich is doing well, Mark Reynolds. Um, so I think a collective team defensive effort is going to be required by us uh, on Saturday to contain them. Now, so you guys have been up and down in the league this year, but the Cup, which you've had a, couple, a lot of success in, in recent years, it's gone well for you this year. Do you feel it's sort of the competition where you've brought everything together so far this year? Yeah, for, for some reason, yeah, to, a bit inconsistent. You're right in the league, but we've pulled it together, you know, because we had a very tough first round tie against UCD. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so that was a massive game. But the guys seem to get themselves that extra bit up, uh, you know, for the cup competition. So I'm just hoping we, we can all, well, we will all be up you know, for Saturday night's game. And just for the people who were watching this who wouldn't be too familiar with the two teams, what should they be watching out for? Like, what should, they, what should get them excited? Oh, well, look, you look at some of the key individuals then, you know, if, if Lorcan can, can get out and transition and, you know, and have a spectacular few dunks or something, you know, he'll excite, excite people. Um, you know, for them, Sesevich, I think, has been probably the player, the top player in the league so far, and he, he does everything. You know, from outside, inside, um, but there, yeah, look, uh, uh, there's a lot of talent on both teams. Um, sometimes finals, you know, may not bring out the the best possible game, yeah, and we don't really mind that. It's all about can we get that win, but hopefully in the process we can come with a good performance. Now I mentioned before that, that most of the Temple Oak side has a lot of experience at this. There is one player who's a unique exception. That's Zabi Ariaga. But he's the type of player who doesn't really need to worry about that because he's got a different kind of experience. Experience against one of the greatest basketball players on the planet right now. Zabi, as you can guess from the name, is originally not from Ireland. He grew up in Bilbao. And then as a youngster, he went down to Madrid and he played for Estudiantes. And regular viewers of this know that Estudiantes have a certain rival who's a bigger club, Real Madrid. And Zabi once, well, I'll let him describe it, Kind of got his ass handed to him by Luka Doncic in a youth game. I was crazy when, when my first experience like a, as a pro basketball player was when I was 15 years old. I moved to Madrid to play for the younger team for Estudiantes. There is an ACB team. Yeah, yeah. And the guy playing like two years under me, he was in the opposite team that was Real Madrid, was Luka Doncic. So it was like, it was fun to So he was like 13 him. when you were playing against him? I was 16 and he was 14, yeah. Like the second year I played against him. Uh, and how did 16-year-old Zabi do against Luka? I mean, you suffer. He was already dominating those leagues. And one year after he was playing ACB, so. That's, that's like great for you, like looking back, you know, because could you even have imagined when you were 16 that this kid was going to be what he is now, which is guaranteed all star, potential MVP? Like. I mean, you could tell he was going to be good, but you couldn't tell he was going to be that great, you know? Like, you never know what the top of some, someone is. So, this kid, you know, like, he's, he's unbelievable. And decisions, decisions. So much to ponder, so much to consider. So I'm going to leave my analysis till after the next segment, to be honest, because more important, we have competition time right here, right now. It's a matter of giving. Ball in Europe, given to you. We have got two tickets for the women's final on Sunday, 5 p.m. Irish time in the National Basketball Arena, Colester and Brunel. Brunel looking for their first ever title. Colester looking to end a pretty lengthy drive by their standards for this trophy as well. It is going to be a slobber knocker. Brunel, not been great in the league, but they have been all out balling in a cup. Colester slow start to the league, they show what they can do in this cup campaign and also in their last most recent league games. So there's a lot at stake here, obviously apart from the title, because these two have already had two great, great games in the league this season. This one's going to be special. And you get a chance to go see it, courtesy of us. Well, courtesy of Basketball Ireland, who gave us tickets to give to you. So what are you going to do to win the tickets? Well, I've been thinking literally while recording this, what are we going to do for the giveaway? Like, because we could tell them to subscribe, but that's hard to work out. We could tell them to like our Instagram, but that's also hard to work out. So here's what we're going to do. You can either comment on one of our Instagram photos or comment on this video. One or the other. If you want to do both, great. If you comment on this video, if you comment on the Instagram, fantastic. Although, do note, to collect the tickets if you win, you have to be a subscriber for, either, for whichever one you're commenting on. I'll explain why in a second. And if you do that, just say who you think is going to win the women's final. Colester or Brunel. Give us a comment on either this video or the, uh, an Instagram post, any of our Instagram, well, we'll put an Instagram post up with the competition. You'll see that on our gram, which will be linked below. So do that, and yeah, uh, you know, whoever comes out, assuming you follow us, because that's the only way we can contact you, we got to message you and then email you the tickets, uh, you will have two tickets to the Women's Cup Final. So that's how you're going to win tickets to the Cup Final. So best of luck with that. 
And um, yeah, so we are going to move on now to the women's stuff. Unfortunately, Brunel weren't in person in Dublin for the videos when we were doing this previous shoot. So we do only have cholesterol people. But on the upside, we have a massive, massive uh, preview feature coming on either Friday evening or Saturday, more likely the latter. Uh, depends on my schedule. Well, actually, that'll be Friday evening now I think about the schedule. But uh, no, this is me actually spitballing when you're going to see a feature. Which will be previewing that game, which is on Sunday, also on TG Car, also live and free around the world. But we did get to meet a couple of the people involved. So first of all, to give you a taste for it, I asked Carl Kilbride, who is the head coach of Cholester Women, uh, who I tried to do the last game, it was too loud. Uh, I asked Carl Kilbride what people who aren't familiar with these sides should expect in this game. Um, I imagine they look for you know a lot of transition scores. We want to get out and run, and, and so do they. And in the half court, they look to play through um, Trian and Clay a lot more than we do. We want to we play a lot of five out. And we spread the floor. We want to shoot threes, and we want to attack the paint and kick and hit shooters, and we want to kind of score early in transition. And um, it, you know, it should be exciting that you know if both teams can get into that kind of open up tempo game, it should you know generally exciting for everybody watching. Carl Kilbride, the cholester coach. Next up, we've got a woman with some serious family ties. Adela randall cousin, Antoine, runs Super Bowl 40 with the Pittsburgh Steelers, including throwing a tremendous pass on a gadget play all the way to Heinz Ward for a big touchdown that gave the Steelers their winner over Seahawks. Go Steelers. Uh, yes, you're getting some of my fandom here. What more could you ask for? But I asked Adela what it's going to be like for her with all her family back home in the US, being able to watch, tune in and cheer her on. And, ah, you know, it turns out they're making an event of it. Oh, it's so exciting, you know. Um, so I actually, my brother actually gathered the whole family for this day at one person's house in order to, um, just for everyone to be able to tune in and watch the game, like a big house party in a sense, to watch the game. So it's definitely a blessing, it's exciting, and they can support me from a distance and they can see what I'm actually over here doing. <laughs> and like, for you, obviously, it's your first cup final with Colester. What's it mean for you personally to be playing in it? Oh man, I live for the big moments, you know. I'm excited for the big moment and I just hope that we come out with a win, we play hard and we lock down our defense. That's our main goal. So it, it means a lot to me. And like for, for you, I suppose, like, what's it like been sort of, you know, blending the study with basketball yet again in your life, so to speak? <laughs> like. Um, it's definitely challenging, you know, you have to be able to prioritize that time, so you have to manage your time. And so just being able to allocate a certain amount of time to certain things is definitely can be challenging, but hey, you got to, you know, stay focused and have that mindset, hey, you, you got to get it done, you have to finish. So it's definitely challenging, but there's no setbacks, you just have to keep going. So we close with uh, my quick look ahead to the final. I can't give my pick uh, because my actual TV duties mean I can't, so well, hey, I get out of that. What should I watch out for? I'm expecting a lot of scoring. It's really that simple. We are, we've are we got two teams who can defend, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but Zesevic, Murphy, you look Marco Thomas, Reina, you look at like what Puff Summers can do as a creator, Zabi Ariaga. I mean, this is going to be a heck of a game. Uh, so just watch out for that entirely. Women's game, again, the paint is going to be so decisive, uh, actually more so than the men's in many respects. But um, if someone can get a big edge in the outside shooting in that, again, I think you know we could be in for a good one. Two very close games coming up, both going to be great. Don't forget to enter the competition. But before you go, we have a little bit of a favour to ask. So we are trying to build this channel up, and not just because of my ego, which is enormous and out of control. There's no doubting that. It's also because of the quality of the content we can give you. Because the more we hit certain metrics that YouTube likes, the more we can actually do, and particularly when it comes to live footage on this channel. And we want to be able to do more live stuff, more actual, you know, stuff with real developed lights and stuff like that, content on site. But that requires us hitting some big, big metrics. But you can help by doing very little entirely. Subscribe button's down there. The bell's down there. You can share it as well. You can like it. You can comment it. But you subscribe and you bell and you share, that's amazing. They're huge for us. Uh, that will like bring up our metrics massively and it'll make YouTube like us more. I mean, we can do more for you because we're doing this content for you. Uh, that'd be great. So please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to comment, don't forget to like, don't forget to tell everybody you know in the whole universe to watch this video and to subscribe to this channel. For Ball in Europe, uh, until next week when we're going to have a couple of videos, one of which might be about these games, hinty, hinty, hint. Uh, yeah, that's me and we out.